Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about blending oil paint. I'm going to show you a few different ways to approach blending and I'll even show you the various mediums and brushes that I use as well. The great thing about oil paint is that it blends extremely easily. However, this can also be tricky to navigate because it's very easy to over blend and have a very muddy colored painting. So I will make sure to show you my favorite ways to blend just the right amount. All right, let's get into the video. I always start by putting on my protective gloves and getting out some towels to wipe my brush on. I have a jar of Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits here, and later I'll be showing you how to use another medium as well. We're going to start off with earthy tones and then we'll move on to color. So for now, I'm using Titanium White for the high key tone, which means the lightest, Burnt Sienna for the mid tone, and burnt umber for the low key tone, meaning the darkest. I have a few different brushes. Honestly, I don't know the exact size or names of these brushes. I tend to work with synthetic brushes. One reason is because I'm vegan, so I feel a little bit weird about buying animal hair brushes, but I also just really prefer how they feel and how smooth they are. I usually will dip my brush in Gamsol before starting to loosen the bristles up. Also, for this first demonstration, we'll be using Gamsol for blending, so we'll keep some of that on our brush for that purpose. We're going to start with the mid-tone, so I'm grabbing some titanium white and burnt sienna to achieve a light brown sort of color to make our first swatch. So this method of blending uses a high, mid, and low key tone. So if you're blending clothing or skin, for example, you can take the high, mid, and low key tone versions of the color that you're using to implement this technique with. You can wipe your brush off, grab some titanium white to create a mostly white swatch with a bit of burnt sienna. You can swatch that color right at the edge of the mid tone so they are overlapping a bit. A lot of people will mix colors with a palette knife and that's amazing, but I'm kind of lazy and usually just use my brush to be honest. Don't come after me, art snobs. <laughs> then I washed my brush off and went in for the burnt umber and overlapped that swatch on the edge of the burnt sienna. So now you can see we have three tones and like I said, you can find a version of this in any type of painting, a sunset, a landscape, portrait. There's always going to be this gradient of sorts. My next step is to simply take the dry brush on the overlapping edges and drag it straight across to blend those edges together. I used a bit too much Gamsol, but it's okay because I usually would add layers anyway in a normal painting. I just keep going over that line until it looks nice and fuzzy. Now I'm taking my larger flat brush, which is completely dry, um, but I'm going over the whole thing basically to create a gradient and blend it all out. Okay, now I'll show you another way to blend these same colors with just a high and low key tone. The difference is, let's say you're painting skin tones. If you want to achieve a very smooth, blended out look, you would always want to have a mid-tone or transition shade in between your lights and darks. Whereas with this method, with just a high and low tone, you will still blend the same way but you'll have a higher contrast between the colors. And you kind of just skip a step because you're only blending two shades instead of three, if that makes sense. So I'm simply adding a high key light brown tone and the straight burnt umber for the low key tone. 
and I'm just overlapping those two colors without a mid-tone. You can also try stippling or just pushing the brush down in patting or pressing motions to add awesome texture. You can also really see the higher contrast in this example versus the top example. So depending on your look and style of art, you can create a different feel depending on what you like. Okay, now I'm just gonna show you another quick technique for blending, and that is to simply press your brush down onto the canvas. Instead of sweeping your brush across to get that smooth look, you're going to press and have blocks of color, and you'll get a lot more texture this way. I went back with a dry brush and pressed some more all over just to blend everything out. This kind of reminded me of fur, and you could definitely use this technique on like a squirrel painting or something. <laughs> or maybe some like gravel or dirt, you know, soil or something like that. Okay, so I got out a new canvas board and now I'm going to show you how to blend using brighter colors with some different brush strokes. The colors I'll be using will be cadmium orange hue for the mid-tone, permanent alizarin crimson for the low tone, and yellow lemon hue for the high key tone. And I'm getting out my palette knife this time for all the art snobs out there. Sometimes I like to go ahead and drag the colors together on the palette so you can have like mixed shades ready to go and I just kind of like how it looks. I'm grabbing my Filbert brush. No reason, honestly, I'm just switching it up and I really like this brush. Filberts are great for blending in my opinion because they're more round and grab more surface area than the flat, sharp brushes. I'm adding the lemon yellow hue, then the cadmium orange hue, and the alizarin crimson. They're all already a bit mixed together from my palette, which helps for blending. I then grabbed this small brush and I started making circular motions along the overlapping lines where the colors meet. Again, I used a bit too much Gamsol, so if you want thicker, richer colors, you can use a little bit less, but I also tend to work in layers uh, normally. And you always want to use the fat over lean rule, meaning your first layer would be quite thin and runny like this, and then your top layers would be thicker with little to no Gamsol and maybe uh, some added oil medium. Okay, now I'm going to grab my angle brush and demonstrate cross hatching. I didn't use as much Gamsol this time, so you can really see how rich and vibrant the colors are. As you can see on my top rainbow example, you really can create almost a watercolor effect when you use a lot of Gamsol. It just depends on how you're painting. Like I said, if you plan to build up layers, um, you can do that, but if you want to create like a thick landscape all in one sitting, a la prima, then you can definitely do that and that's beautiful as well. I grabbed my cute small brush again and started the cross hatching technique. You can simply make a bunch of diagonal marks uh, in order to blend the two colors. Okay, and honestly, I sort of messed this part up a bit, but it's art, you know? It, it probably has a deep meaning that you just wouldn't understand, okay? <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I grabbed my large flat brush in order to smooth this out, even though I should have left it because the cross hatches were the main event, like they were the texture I wanted. But yeah, you can make sweeping motions across the whole area to blend. Then I took out my large brush and blended in the opposite direction, which works really well if you're painting clouds or skin. It looks a bit messy here, but it's great for skies. Yeah, it almost looks like a fire going, so uh, definitely try this if you're trying to paint an explosion or something. Now I'm taking my medium flat brush and showing you more of those pressing motions and more of that stippling action. Pressing the brush over and over to create blended texture. I really like this technique. It feels very impressionistic. It's great for nature, for loose paintings, and just kind of therapeutic. Okay, now we're going to bust out the stand oil. Round of applause for the stand oil. <laughs> stand oil is a very thick medium. It has a honey-like consistency. It's basically linseed oil, which is a popular medium uh, that's heated up and pol polymerized. <laughs> um, not sure if I said that right. It doesn't yellow over time. It's non-toxic, it's great for glazing layers of oil paint, and you can mix it with Gamsol. I started off with a clean brush, a small amount of Gamsol on the brush so the colors stay pretty vibrant. I added a bit more lemon yellow because my other one got a bit dirty on my palette and with a clean and dried brush I grabbed some clean yellow and with a clean dried brush I grabbed some alizarin crimson. And with a clean brush, I grabbed some straight stand oil. And here's where the beautiful, gorgeous, thick magic happens, people. Stand oil is luscious. It just glides right on. I went over those overlapping, touching lines and simply watched the colors meld together. I normally don't use stand oil as much as Gamsol for blending, um, but doing these exercises really inspired me to use stand oil more often. And now I'm going over to the high and low tone swatches, keeping that high contrast in case you prefer that look, but still blending the colors really nicely. You can sweep across, press and stipple, or do small circles to blend. There are so many choices, baby! You can do sweeping down motions, so moving in the opposite direction as when you originally put the color down. I grabbed my large flat brush to smooth it all out as shown previously. So yeah, those are all the different ways that I like to blend oil paint. As a summary, we can either use Gamsol alone, some type of oil medium alone, like stand oil, or we can mix the two together, or we can use none and just have plain oil paint that's thick and impasto. For blending, we can use sweeping, circular, pressing, and stippling motions. We can cross hatch. We can keep the texture or smooth the texture out. We can have high contrast with high and low key tones or smooth things out using mid tones and low contrast. Filbert brushes are great for blending out. 
while flat brushes are great for pressing and sweeping. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope this helped you in some way. I hope you have a magical week or weekend ahead and I will see you very soon. Bye.